I think of everything that I just said, this was probably the most important part of this entire video. Only one of the four threads, it's a little awkward, but other than that, it is pretty easy. It is time to thread that serger machine and put it to work. If you haven't used your serger machine because you just don't know how to thread it, or you have heard all the horror stories of people telling you how difficult it is to thread your serger machine, I am here to help you. I recently threaded my brand new, new to me, <laughs> Janome 8002D serger machine for the very first time. And I really want to encourage you not to be afraid and just jump in, just do it. Get the serger machine out of the box, out of that closet, and get to know your serger machine. Go ahead and give it a try. Because even though it can be a little bit intimidating, it is not difficult to do. Hi everybody, I'm Ali. Welcome to my YouTube channel where you'll learn sewing and crafting tutorials and tips so that you and I can make beautiful things together. In this video, I will share with you the most important tips that I found as I was threading my Janome 8002D serger machine for the very first time. Now, I found a great video. This was a game changer for me. I don't think I would have jumped in and start threading my serger machine if I didn't find this video. So definitely check it out after you see this video because right, right now I'm just gonna give you like a quick summary of like the key points for that I learned as I was watching that other video and threading my machine. But definitely when it's time to thread your serger machine, check out that other video. Disclosure, this video is for the Janome 8002D serger machine. But what I understand is that this will also apply to other models of Janome serger machines and even other brands. And I've added the models here for your reference. Um, and the reason for that is because it's a pretty manual machine. If you don't have this specific model, this video may still help you. Okay, first of all, let's talk about the tools that I used. Now, this is a used serger machine, which means that I don't have the little screwdrivers that came originally with the machine. But if you have a brand new machine, those will come with your machine. But what does not come with your machine and you will need is tweezers, definitely will need a pair of tweezers, and floss threader. And the floss threaders you can buy anywhere, any pharmacy, they're pretty economical. Consider liking this video and subscribing to this channel if you have learned something today. The second tip that she talks about is how to add the thread to the telescopic rod. And there are like two different holes and like she explains where to place your thread to have uh, enough tension for when you're using the machine. So that step is pretty easy and she suggests that you do all of that at once. And the same goes for the thread guide. The two dials that you see here on the top are for the left and the right needles. And the two tension dials right below it are for the bottom and upper loopers. The beauty of all this is that they're color coded. So it's at least visually less intimidating as long as you follow the colors for the needle or the looper. To get started, make sure that you raise your presser foot. This is the same as for a sewing machine, right? When you're threading your sewing machine, you wanna raise your presser foot. You don't know how many times I've tried to thread my machine and I'm like, why is this stuck? It's not going. And it's because I did not raise the presser foot. Raise the presser foot, don't forget. As I was trying to thread the machine, I, when I was done threading the serger and I was 
now inserting the thread in the eyes of the needle, the left and the right needle. I couldn't. It, I was having such a hard time. And it's because I left the presser foot on the machine. My advice to you is just remove the presser foot altogether. It just, it really makes it easier to thread the needles. She did say in the video, and I'm going to enforce, reinforce it here, because this is not a jet air threading serger machine, you must follow the specific order when threading the machine. For some reason, if you thread the machine in a different order, it messes up the whole process. I don't know why, and I don't want to find out. I am not going to find out. I'm going to believe her and I'm just going to thread it the exact same way she said in the order that she said. So you start with the upper looper, which is the red dial. Then you do the lower looper, which is the green one. Then you're going to thread your right needle and then the left needle. And I understand why that makes sense because if you try to do the left first when you get to some guides it's going to be difficult to insert the thread in the right needle the upper and lower looper i still don't understand but it's okay there's some things you don't need to understand and this is one of those so that's the order and that is it now from this point on you just need to make sure your threads are not tangled uh, when you're inserting, moving the thread from one point to the other. Make sure that they don't catch on another guy that is not supposed to be in. Make sure that it's not caught on a, or on a nail, like part of the nail, you know, or the knife or any other place that is not the thread is not supposed to be in. Super important that you keep close attention as of where is the thread in it that is not tangled. My recommendation, just go slow. When you are threading the upper looper, which is the first one you're threading, apparently a lot of people miss this one step so she reinforced that and so i'm going to mention it here again which is to put the thread behind the pin right before you insert the thread the tail of your thread into the upper looper eye there is like a little pin so make sure you insert your thread behind that pin that is kind of like what you may miss when you are threading the upper looper now, for the bottom looper, this is the tricky one. Don't be afraid. It's just a little more work. So it can be a little awkward to get the thread through the bottom of the dog feet. That's pretty much what you're doing. You're getting the thread from the thread guy through the tension dial, and then you have to get it through the guides, and it has to go from one end from left to right of your serger right under the dog feet and when it gets to the other side when it gets to the left you have to insert your thread into the eye of an of the another guide that you can barely see you will definitely need the floss threader here there is no way you're going to be able to do this without the floss threader so once you get it on the other side just make sure it goes under the dog feet and it comes out the other way it looks it sounds a little complicated it's just it's an it's in an awkward position that you have to move your serger and, and tilt the serger so that you can kind of peek inside the machine just make sure that you have a lot of thread in the lasso of your floss threader. That way, um, when you're pushing it through, you don't run the risk of losing your thread and having like the tail of the thread lost inside the, the surgery. Now, apparently this is like a very important step. So don't miss this. After you get the thread 
through that last guy at the bottom looper. So you have the guides that you take the thread, it goes through the tension dial, it goes through the guides, one guy in the front, two in the back that you don't really see, and then you have to thread the eye of the bottom looper. So you need to move the handle towards you. And when you do that, the upper looper and the lower looper move and they come across each other, kind of like, like a little X. Once you see both of them, both the upper and lower or bottom loopers, you're going to stop and you're going to thread your bottom looper. But she mentioned this several times, so I'm gonna mention it again. When you thread the bottom looper, make sure the thread goes above the upper looper. So you're gonna push it and it's gonna go back over the upper looper. Otherwise, you're gonna have a tangled mess when you start using your serger. I think of everything that I just said, this was probably the most important part of this entire video. And that's it, that's it. At this point, now you can thread your right needle and then the left needle. Now, you will not believe how difficult it was for me to thread the right and left needle. For some reason, I could not see, you know, the eye of the needle. I couldn't get my hand behind the, I had to use twisters to actually insert the thread in the needles. So you may need to still use your tweezers for this, but I can tell you that if you are able to thread the bottom looper, you can thread any other part of the serger. That's it. So definitely if you can get a good needle threader that you can kind of put in the back of the needle and help you thread the needles, it will be worth it. I need to find mine. <laughs> Make sure you test your serger manually first. Just run it, turning the wheel, the hand wheel towards you. She said about 10 times. I did it more than that. <laughs> Just do it, do it until you know for a fact that you don't have any mess. And get a couple of pieces of fabric and test your serger it is not that difficult it is a little awkward only one of the four threads only one it's a little awkward but other than that it is pretty easy okay you guys if you want to learn more sewing technique and tutorials go here otherwise i'll see you in the next video ciao